Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. Currently, we are in Ezekiel chapter 28. Now, this is going to be a fascinating chapter because God is going to turn his attention on the king, or let's put it this way, the rulers of Tyre. But it's not, it's going to start off with the earthly ruler and it's going to end up with these who's behind the scenes in the spiritual realm. So let's um let's get in to it, chapter twenty-eight. Um, but to say, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre. So now notice he's going to say ruler at this point, and later he's going to say king, but ruler of Tyre. He said, this is what the Lord God says. Your heart is proud. You have said, I am a God. I sit in the seats of gods in the heart of the sea. Now, this is something, of course, that is unique to Tyre, who is a coastland, who sits with one of the major commerce centers on the Mediterranean Sea. So notice this language here, in the heart of the sea. He says, yet you are a man, not a God, though you have regarded your heart as that of a God. Now, let me stop for a moment. So when we talk about this here, look at this attitude about hit what he is saying. And we're going to see this later on, because what we're going to see is a spiritual influence. So I'm going to do just something. I want to show you something from Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, Ephesians. I think I can do it with Ephesians. Well, yeah, Ephesians. Ephesians, well, you know what? Um, before I go to Ephesians, I want to say, look, Say some, show something that Jesus said right here in John. Uh, let's say 14. John 14. Um, John 14. Um, I hate when I do this because I got I know I'm glossing over it. Oh, here it is, right here. Yes. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm just going to pick this, this statement up that Jesus says as he's talking to the disciples. This is the Last Supper. So he says right here in verse 29, I have told you now before it happens so that when it happens you might believe. I will not talk with you much longer because... The ruler of the world is coming and has no power over me. I just want to kind of, Jesus drops this revelation. The ruler of the world. Okay. The ruler of the world. Now I want to go to Ephesians chapter 2. The ruler of the world comes, he says, and has uh, nothing over me. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2. He says, and, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler who exercised authority over the lower heavens, the spirit now working in the, in the disobedience. Now, I want you to understand, look at that. The rulers of this world. Now, the reason why... I am bringing this up here is because we're going to see who is the ruler behind this prideful king, this prideful ruler of Tyre. And the reason why I say that because if you think about what he is saying, and keep this in mind, he says, I am a God. Then if we skip down, uh, I'm going to jump ahead when he talks about the king of Tyre, all right? And then he says, uh, where yet? 
the King of Tyre, where are you at? Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. I may have to go to Isaiah chapter 14 also to show you this. I think I'm going to do that too. I thought he'd said it here. But it, he talks about the pride, but hold on. Let me do that. Let me go to, uh, I believe I want Isaiah. I believe I want chapter 14. Where I'm, see what I'm doing, I'm comparing, no, I'm comparing in the 14. No. Who? Okay. Oh, that's because I got the wrong verse, wrong chapter. I knew I was okay. All right. Ah. Uh. I'll get it right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Maybe it's seven. I know it's got to be 14, I'm, I'm trying to know, but hold on, let me do this. Let me pause this so I can stop wasting the screen time here. All right, I found it. It was right before me again. It's in Isaiah chapter 14. I want to compare the, the statements here. And the reason why I'm showing this, I'm, I'll probably come back to this again, but I'm just going to show you something. So notice what he says here. This is Isaiah. This is, this, um, this is, this is the prophecy about Lucifer. It says, shining morning star. Now, I'll come, it says, how have you fallen from the heavens, you destroyer of the nations? You have been cut down to the ground. You said to yourself, I will ascend to the heavens. I will set up my throne above the stars of God. I will sit in the mount of the gods assembly in the remotest part of the north. I will sit above the highest cloud. And I will make myself like the most high. Now, I just wanted to read that to show you the attitude so that when we now come over here and we go back to, we go back to the king. No, not the king. Let's go back to the ruler. <laughs> okay. So then notice he says, your heart was proud and you have said, I am a God. So my point that uh, where did his attitude come from? but from his spiritual father. So in other words, he's displaying um, the fact that he is the, 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 the children of Satan, not the children of God. Your heart is proud. You have said, I am a God, and I sit in the seat of God, the seat of God, in the, excuse me, in the heart of the sea. So this is, so, um, even though this uh, this is not the focus of Ezekiel's prophecy right here, it I think it's important to understand when we talk about rulerships, okay? When we talk about rulerships and how the biggest the the biggest uh, deception about Satan. And then even now, there's what's called spiritual warfare. How the biggest deception is thinking, they got you looking at something that is so far out. Instead of how Satan controls the mind, thus controlling the will, and then corralling people in a certain direction. This is true about, I'm going to show you one more scripture. Uh, one more scripture. 
let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter two. And I just want to read you one verse here. Look at verse nine. Um, verse nine, the coming of the lawless one. This is talking about the beast. Some of y'all know him as the Antichrist, even though the term Antichrist is um, not his title, not even his label. Okay, it's not. It's the beast, the lawless one, the man of sin. It says the coming of the lawless one is based on Satan's working with all kinds of false miracles and the signs and wonders and with every unrighteous, get this, deception among those who are perishing. Now, I want to come back because you can see when God rebukes this ruler, look at his attitude. Look at this attitude. Your heart is pride, proud, proud. So this is the, the, the characteristics of Satan. He was proud. You have said, I'm a God. I sit in the seats of God. And the way he looked at the wealth of the city. He looked at the, the accomplishments, the wealth. And go, look at, look at this great empire that I have made. Now, we can see that that comes directly from Satan. But we also see how Satan rules the earth. And I, and I think that's important to understand. So, so the manifestation of people's thoughts is a direct reflect of how Satan has corralled, conditioned our minds in a certain way. Now, this man has power. But think about just the everyday average person and look at the direction how easy it is to corral us in a certain direction i mean just think about the pop stars who occupy our minds or hundreds of thousands of people will cram into um, um a stadium to hear them sing or how about this how about how easy it is to have Thousands of people camp out to buy a gym shoe, a t-shirt, or something. Where, where do you think that comes from? It, 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 and, and again, the origins of it is the prince of the ruler of the world. So that's what I, so, so, so now God is dealing with this man who has what? Kind of submitted himself to the ruler of the world, and now he's reflecting the same characteristics that the ruler of the world, who is Satan. Now, we're going to get back to the ruler of the world uh, later, but it is interesting to note. I just wanted to show why this, why he's thinking like this. And now God is going to judge him because what? He willingly gives himself uh, to the arrogance of his nature. This is what the Lord God says. You your heart is proud. You have said, I'm a God. I sit in the seat of God in the heart of the sea. He says, yet you are a man and not a God. Though you have regarded your heart as that of a God. Okay. Then he says, yes, you are wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and understanding, you have acquired wealth for yourself. You have acquired gold and silver for your treasuries. Now, let's kind of go back, because I can't, of course, the statement here when he says, yes, you are wiser than Daniel. Now, I, 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 I tend to think this was sarcastic on God's part. Um, it'd be like if you say, you know, well, you know, you accuse me and say, well, Lynn, you know, you, you just think you all that in a bag of chips. And I go, yeah, right. I'm all that in a bag of chips. Now, I'm saying that sarcastically. I really don't believe that. And I really don't believe that. But, again, so you see how I'm, yeah, 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 right. You know, I, I'm not, you know, actually saying that. But God, I think he's kind of mocking the guy. He said, well, you're you're wiser than Daniel. Because in reality, he's not. He's corrupt. Right? But isn't it, again, amazing how Daniel's name come up? And by the way, Daniel at this time would be on the other side of the empire in the 
government of Nebuchadnezzar, right? And already he's made a name for himself. God had made, given him this influence, how that this was a godly man. And you can say, wow. So he says, by five, I mean, um, verse five, by your great skill in trading, you have increased your wealth, but your heart has become proud because of your wealth. So just his stumbling block is his pride in his wealth. Now, you could probably be sure that behind that is a lot of corruption, a lot of sin, a lot of paganism. Okay, a lot of pag pag paganism. You can also probably see that um, they're not treating people right. He's not treating people right. The arrogant always falls like this. They're not treating people right. You remember the parable in Luke chapter 15 when Jesus talked about the rich man and the poor man. And you give this illustration about the rich man and the poor man. The rich man fared sumptuously every, every day. The poor man just craved to eat crumbs that fall from the rich man's table, but he wouldn't allow them. He said, ah, get away. Get that poor man away from me. And then you see that they both died, and then one was in Abraham's bosom, and the other one was in Hades. So you see this arrogance right here, the arrogance of this man, the arrogance, his heart, lifted up in pride by his wealth. Verse 6, therefore, this is what the Lord God says, because... You regard in your heart as because you regard your heart as that of a god. I'm about to bring strangers against you, ruthless men from the nations. They will draw their swords against your magnificent wisdom, and will defile your splendor. In other words, your wisdom will not, in all but you, how great your wisdom is, how wide you think it, you will not be able to outsmart the very simplest of these men. They're ruthless. They're, they're, they're violent. Verse 8. They will bring you down to the pit and you will die a violent death in the heart of the sea. Will you still say, I'm a god in the presence of those who kill you? Yet you will be only a man, not a god, in the hands of those who kill you. You will die the death of the uncircumcised at the hands of strangers. For I have spoken this, and this is the declaration of the Lord. So a horrible end to a very prideful man. Very horrible end to a prideful man. Isn't it amazing that people still haven't learned the lesson? People still haven't learned the lesson that um, no matter what, I mean, how pride is always a bad thing to go. It's just amazing. And, and I think part of the reason they don't learn the lesson is because they, um, uh, they don't, because of the sinful nature and because they give themselves over to sin, then they are also now driven by the ruler of this world to their destruction. All right, guys, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought, a comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. I'll see you in the next study.